Hello and welcome back to Inquisitor Martyr. Last time we kept going with Intel missions and we're going to keep... Oh, didn't want to hit that button. We will keep doing that for the moment. Once again, keep hitting wrong buttons on this thing. Oh, that's a really gross setup. Let's see how bad this is now with all the modifiers. Okay, so there's gonna be three additional champions in champion groups. <laughs> One normal, additional normal enemy, I don't care about that. A lot of HP on those champions. Nah, we'll be fine. So, got some... I, I always say fun news when it's never fun. But, uh, Consumer Electronics Show happened not too long ago. If you didn't pay attention to it, I don't blame you. I typically don't. Mostly because it's Consumer Electronics. It's everything from computer monitors to refrigerators. It's so broad that if you're looking for anything specific, it's kind of a waste. But the gaming side of CES had a real interesting uh, thing to present. It was MSI came out, which if you don't know MSI, they're a big name in PCs. But they came out with a new monitor that they showed off with AI integration. Which doesn't sound too bad. It sounds... If you're like me, the first... The second you heard it, you're like, oh, this sounds like some gimmicky BS of, like, it's not going to do much or it's going to be very minimal. It is actually big enough that it can be a colossal risk for gaming. And I say that and I don't take that set, like, that accusation lightly. Because first off, it's AI in the monitor. That's how they sold it, or they're talking about it. Is It's in the monitor itself. It's an AI chip in there. So it is completely divorced from your computer. Or your console if you hook it up. Which is a big thing I stress here. So, what the AI does is it scans what is being broadcast on the screen. And you can modify its reaction. You know, you're training AI. What they did was they used an example of League of Legends. And what they did was they had it so the AI was trained to focus on the minimap. And when an enemy would show up on the minimap, like outside of your vision or whatever, it would pop up a red skull and have it kind of pointing towards where the enemy is. Effectively just saying, hey, here's a guy, even if you missed him, or they're just off screen, but they were within vision of a ward or something, so they showed up on the minimap. You can already kind of see the problem here, right? I can't be the only one. You can train this AI to more or less track enemies. And that's scary because you could do that for like Call of Duty. Imagine if you could train it to identify movement of a player and then put a red box around it. Playing Warzone, playing something like Escape from Tarkov. 
where you might not be able to immediately detect someone or you might not be able to pick out them as easily or you're focused on something else you know you're tunnel visioned but the game goes oh a guy ran by so we'll track him as long as we can things like that i think are a colossal risk and the guys at the show are like haha don't cheat with this guys no this this can completely screw multiplayer games I use Call of Duty as a prime example here. Imagine if it could do... If you had, let's say, let's say you had a UAV up, and you can detect every enemy. And you tell the game, or you tell the AI, hey, tell me, like, point in a direction where enemies are within, you know, a short distance around on the minimap or anyone that isn't on the edge of my minimap. So there might be a guy coming around a corner, and it would have a little arrow pointing, slowly tracking where he is, more or less walling. And of course, I've seen people go, oh, well, the thing that's going to keep people from doing it is having to train the AI. I can tell you here and now, there will be, if it comes out, if they don't get enough backlash, which I pray to God they get a ton of pushback on this. But there will be, within a week, I'll give it a week, I'm generous here. Within a week, there will be a entire data set or a preset available for people. Either for sale, or people will be giving it away for free. Why? Because that's how things always are. The only solution is going to be to make consoles, because it's just a monitor. It's just like a TV. You can plug in a system or whatever you want into it. You're going to have to have to have all these games and systems start going in and saying, okay, what is... What are we outputting to? Are we outputting to a Samsung TV? Or is it this MSI AI-infused monitor? And if it's these monitors, they're going to have to go, hey, disable this or we're going to get, you're going to get banned. Because they already do that to some degree, I believe, with like Cronuses and Zens and all these like strike packs and they're, they're like these weird bolt-ons to controllers that people say give you like better aim assist or something I don't fully understand them I'm I'm old school I'm normal I'm just like hey controller I don't need to sit here and pay, you know, 70, 80, 100 dollars, however much, to sweat in Call of Duty. Because God knows you can use that shit, and then the second you go into competitive, and you get into, let's say you get picked up by a pro scene, you go to an event, odds are those things are probably prohibited, and if you tried to use them, they'd be like, hey, the hell is that? No, you can't use it get out of here you chode and at that point I'd I'd laugh granted I saw a guy recently some like I think Portuguese guy who was doing a Fortnite tournament at a location cheating and the uh, one of the like people monitoring comes up behind him and he's like you gotta leave and the guy's like no and he just kept playing for a bit and they finally just were like dude get the fuck out of here and then he had to leave so that wouldn't even stop some people. Some people are stupid. Alright, it's just a normal judgment mission.
but this this AI mod or stuff, it's something I was talking with a friend of mine about, and it's it's something we agreed is inevitable. It's just it's gonna need to be kind of reined in, otherwise a lot of bad things are gonna happen for gaming at least. And I've seen people go, oh well it can be used for Oh, what is it? It's like a uh, like access accessibility options. Cause I know Fortnite has it where you can turn on a ring that shows footsteps in which direction and some people who are sweaty use it and you have people saying, Oh well it's part of the game, so we should be able to use it and not really comprehending kind of where fairness comes into it. Not like we're seeing a bunch of deaf people sweep Fortnite Pro tournaments. But some people care more about winning than any degree of balance or anything like that. But it did raise a question for me of at what point does accessibility stop becoming a thing? Because I understand when it's stuff like colorblind modes or making a special controller for people with like one hand or things like that. That it's fine. But at a certain point you get stuff like this where you're having to potentially have all these markers and stuff show up for a player. And I begin to ask, when is this just having the game play itself? With minimal player input. Using League as the example, if you can't flick your eyes to the minimap every so often, that's a skill issue. That's a you problem. Personally, that was something I learned to do playing COD years ago, was just quick looking over at the minimap or understanding if I'm at like a lull in combat, I can stop, look at it, assess what's going on, and react. Sometimes it feels like some people just going, hey, I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to meet this skill requirement, so do it for me. And this isn't some condemnation of anyone who needs actual accessibility things. That's not what I'm getting at. I just think... I just think the way this AI monitor can be used is gonna go bad. The only upside I had presented was if this does come out and it absolutely just butchers multiplayer games to the ends of the earth, we might see a... it would be bad, but multiplayer shooters, like PvP shooters, and PvP games kind of dry up for a while. Granted, I can't imagine many would do that because if Activision doesn't have Call of Duty, they kinda just lost most of their value. And I think they would rather do some intrusive method and force you to not use those monitors than to let it slide and potentially kneecap the industry. But there is the possibility we would see suddenly a rise in more co-op games or more sandbox kind of games, which would be nice, but I'd rather just see genuine competition crop up and that be fun instead of having to suffer through a very weird transitory period in the industry and in the market.
See, that'd be a cool eviscerator, but I don't do melee. Because, I mean, look at that. 30% chance to create electric arcs on melee hits. They hit additional enemies, dealing base damage as heat and shock. Vulnerability effectiveness, chance to cause bleeding, damage bonus on eviscerate, critical to hit damage. That would be good. We'll do a third run. Those two were really short, and we also have a passive point to put in somewhere. I'm used to playing Rogue Trader where I hit L2 to pull up my menu, so I'm just reflex doing that. A really good point my friend had pointed out was that essentially with even just announcing this monitor, even if it gets taken off shelves, which I don't think it will, they would have to get a ton of backlash and that'll only happen after it comes out and people abuse it. But I think and what he said was the cat's out of the bag, the genie's out of the bottle, every other colloquial term or phrase. Now that this idea exists, you can bet other companies are going to try to create their own. And we're going to start seeing others and knockoffs. I made the joke that we'll see some Chinese one on, like, Baidu or... Actually, no, it wouldn't be Baidu. It would be, like... Pinduoduo or on like Wish that'll scan everything on the screen and send your information back to the Chinese government. But the reality of it is that could be a thing. You could get scammy versions. You could potentially get extra things if you're getting data sets off other people. Because unless there's a button that is essentially turn on the AI, turn off the AI. Someone could have it where it's just, oh, while it's active all the time, we're gonna look for certain fields or certain information to be input and send it back somehow or just collect it. And of course, people will make knockoffs. All it takes is a company to reverse engineer something, even if it's not legal, they can just say, oh, we came up with a similar idea, or we made our own version, and just make it different enough that they can have plausible deniability. That actually happened with the, god, what was it, the Mexican... What, what was it? There was their assault rifle, the... Zihuatl, I think? It looks like a G36 to the point where H&K tried suing them and they ended up sending investigators to the weapon plant and they watched how they were built and realized, oh, it's just the case. The actual like internals were completely different and they realized they didn't have a case for suing. But... Yeah, I just... I can't imagine this is going to end well, which is unfortunate, because I do see value in an AI like that for something like programming. If it could just immediately flag an issue. You're writing up code and it just goes, hey, you have missed an end bracket. This is going to break. But I know some versions or like some programming languages are moving away or have moved away from needing end brackets because I know that's how Swift was. 
when I learned that. Well, back when it first came out. Their whole thing was like, hey, it's like C++, but no end brackets, so you can be a little lazy with things like that. But at the same time, I'm not really looking for... Admittedly, I'm not looking for the regular market, because stuff like MSI, they're by and large a gaming computer, gaming company. They're not making computers and parts for your grandma's computer. Ah, no, I just got bad feeling. Which, actually, thinking of AI, I saw people freaking out over the game PAL World, which managed to get over a million concurrent players. Putting it, I think, in, like... The top seven or eight games on Steam for concurrent players ever. But people were having a fit because the the CEO of the studio or the company, the guy really likes AI. And I'm just like, okay, so? It's like you realize how many tech CEOs or company CEOs who just kind of hear it can do X, Y, and Z go, oh, that's great, we should use it, without understanding any negatives or any extra parts. It's pretty common. This isn't some newfangled thing where this guy's an anomaly. And I saw people angry saying, oh, Nintendo's gonna sue. I'm like, for what? It's a parody. Japan themselves, Game Freak lifted designs for a bunch of the monsters. Uh, they lifted designs from a bunch of Dragon Quest monsters for Pokemon. So the irony of them turning around and suing someone else for taking inspiration from their designs. It's some pot calling the kettle black kind of stuff. So I entirely expect Nintendo and Game Freak to do it because they have the wherewithal and self-awareness of a sea sponge. Hey, we finally got that uh, Warfare point. I was hoping for that, because that, if we ignore all the loot, stop hitting wrong buttons, that gives us plus 5% critical hit chance. I was looking at that before I started recording, and I was really hoping we'd nab that, because that's a nice bump. And for offense, our critical hit chance is now 19%. That's pretty solid, honestly. One in five shots, in theory, being a crit, which will give us 54% extra damage and plus 16, which... Can we see what that is specifically? Oh, wow, there's actually, like... God, that's a lot of extra stuff. When you critically hit game rolls from 1 to 100, then adds your critical strength value. So we can get up to critical hits deal 300% damage and apply 100% stronger dots. Huh. That's a cool system I have never bothered to look at after all these years. Learn something new every day.
But that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.